Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another lesson from Guitar with Tony G. I'm Tony G, and I'm here to help you out today. I've been perusing so many forums lately online with guitar players, and so many people are asking the same question. The question is, what do I learn next? This is a huge question because for everybody, it's always a different answer. But I want to help you be able to decide what you need to learn moving forward. Now, I think that there are a lot of basic skills that every guitar player should have before they kind of branch off into their specific genre or style that they want to focus on. Some of these things include being able to play chords cleanly, consistently, correctly, being able to make chord transitions, take those chord transitions, turn them into chord progressions, put all that together with strumming patterns. You should be able to do finger exercises, scales, alternate picking, and a couple more things as well. But when it comes to what you should learn next, I always want to tell people to look towards what their ultimate goal is. What's your ultimate goal as a guitar player? Do you want to be able to play like one of your idols? Do you want to play a specific style? Do you want to be able to play a specific genre? Do you want to be a shredder and a lead player? Or do you want to focus more on rhythm? Maybe your ultimate goal is to write your own songs. I think that that's a fantastic goal. That was my goal for a long time, but I didn't know how because nobody ever showed me how and nobody ever told me that all you need to learn is a little bit of music theory, take a look at some keys, throw some chords together, and you're off to the races. Of course, that's not the end all be all. There's a lot more that goes into writing a song than just that, but that's such a perfect way to start. So I want you to take a look at your ultimate goal with your guitar playing, whether it's to jam with friends, be able to play a few simple songs around a campfire, or join a band and get up on stage and rock out. You need to take a look at who you want to sound like, what you want to sound like, or what genre you want to be playing in. Let's take a couple examples right here. For a long time when I picked up the guitar, I just wanted to be a rock and roller all the way. I wanted to be like Slash, like Randy Rhodes, like Jimi Hendrix, like Angus Young. I love all those guitar players and I love their style and I love the way they play. I think that Slash is the most amazing at his solos because he can really tell the story of a song through his solos. I always think they fit so perfectly. That's of course my personal opinion. But when I play a solo, when I went to, to learn how to write a solo, I tried to do it exactly like he did. And to this day, I still can't. <laughs> but that's mostly because I haven't sat down and studied his stuff as much as I need to. Now, that doesn't mean that I couldn't do it in the future. I just haven't applied the work towards it yet. But maybe one day, I definitely will be able to when I have the time to put in the work. Any other guitar player, all it takes is a matter of a little bit of drive and hard work towards your goal. So when we're playing rock and roll, there's a couple basic things we need to learn how to do. We need to learn how to play some power chords. We need to learn how to do some hammer-ons. Pull-offs. Some slides. We need to learn the pentatonic scale. We need to learn how to do all these different things but it all starts with just taking them one at a time. You don't need to say, okay, here's my list of things to do, one practice session, let's cover them all. No, 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 no. We wanna to try to master one thing at a time. So if that means today's practice session is gonna be focusing on bar chords, then do it. There's a bunch of different bar chords that we can play. We can play our normal ones, we can play them with just two fingers. If we're gonna be playing more blues or uh, you know, some, like some Aerosmith and stuff, we need to learn how to be able to play them with these two fingers so we can easily reach our pinky to grab that sixth. We need to learn a little bit of music theory, like what a sixth is. So there's a lot of things to learn, but if we can set aside a roadmap for ourselves from where we are to what our goal is, we can take a look at everything in between that we need to focus on specifically. Let's say you want to focus more on blues. Then we need to take a look at some blues scales. We need to take a look at some blues keys. You definitely need to know how to do our, you know, whether you're going to play that with your first finger and your ring finger or your first finger and your middle finger. That's up to you. That's something that we need to focus on individually. That's just one of those stepping stones to get you to your ultimate goal. If you want to learn how to play more folk, you're going to have to focus on your picking hand a lot. Focus on strumming patterns. Be able to play some really cool strumming patterns all while being able to sing over them if you want to be able to sing as well. That could be part of your ultimate goal too. So I want you right now to go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pen or if you're on your phone or if you're on your computer, just open up a notepad or a, a note app and I want you to write down what your essential and ultimate goal 
of playing guitar is right now. Go ahead and go for it. I'm going to write mine down too. Okay, what did I write down? I wrote down to be able to play jazz. I haven't really stepped into the realm of jazz yet, but that's where I'm going next. I've been a rock and roll guy for a long time. I play some folk, I do a lot of finger picking now, which is a lot of fun, but I'm not too familiar with jazz chords, jazz shapes, and even jazz melodies when you're soloing. So that's something that I wanna take a look into. Okay, next, let's write down three things that we think we're gonna need to learn in order to get to that next step, okay? Here we go. Okay, what did you write down? If there are three things that you wrote down, you know that you have at least those three things to learn, if not more. But that's where we can start focusing. Again, make sure we go one step at a time. It's not gonna be, okay, take one practice session and boom, you're gonna hit your ultimate goal. Obviously, it's a long road to the top if you wanna rock and roll. <laughs> I wrote down my three things. If I wanna get into jazz, I'm gonna need to learn how to play jazz chord voicings, jazz scales, and jazz progressions. I know a little bit off of that off the top of my head, but not so much. So that means that I have a lot of work to dive into. So think about those three things that you wanna learn and think about how you're gonna approach them. If you need to break any one of those things down into a smaller step, that's fine too. Again, we don't wanna bite off more than we can chew. So for jazz chords, I mean, there are probably, oh my gosh, there are probably hundreds if not thousands of different voicings and fingerings that I can learn on the guitar. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna to try to learn them all right now, but I'm definitely gonna start approaching them maybe four or five at a time and then just practice those, practice, 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 and then start adding on. With jazz scales, I know that those usually relate to the types of chords we're playing. So again, if there are hundreds if not thousands of voicings of chords, there's gonna be hundreds or thousands of different variations of a scale I'm gonna need to play. There might not be that many, but I need to think about it and say, okay, is this really attainable? Yes, but I'm gonna have to put in some hard work for it. For jazz progressions, I know the most basic one is what's called a two-five-one. So I need to look into more of those and then take my jazz chord shapes that I'm learning and learn how to apply those to a two, five, one in a specific key so that way I can play these progressions. Then I need to think about more things after that. I'll have to think about timing and rhythms and I'll have to think about how to do some, some key changes in there because it's jazz, right? So I want you to do the same thing. I want you to take it in nice small steps from where you are to what your ultimate goal is or what your next goal is. We don't want to set an ultimate goal that's going to take us 10 years to reach because it's going to seem like it's going to take a long time. Remember that as we're learning, we need to be able to find progress in small steps, which means every time you learn something new, you need to take that as a win. Make sure that you're not going, okay, well, yeah, I can play this now, but oh, I still have such a long way to go. It's good to always challenge ourselves, but it's never a bad thing to congratulate ourselves on learning some new material. In fact, I would say take that ultimate goal and really cut that down into smaller bite-sized chunks and then break each one of those down into three goals like we did today. It's really gonna help you out along the road because you're gonna see big progress even if we've only been going one or two steps at a time because you're really gonna see yourself building all these skills up and then before you know it, your repertoire or your, our, your arsenal, if you will, of guitar techniques and fundamentals is gonna be so huge that when you're learning other things along the way to your ultimate goal, it's gonna be that much easier. Remember that guitar is a cumulative instrument, which means everything we learn will most likely be applied in the future. So that means that we shouldn't half-ass anything. If you're trying to learn something, learn it the right way. Don't just learn it a little bit and then move past it. Because if you just move past it, I guarantee you it's gonna pop up again in the future, and if you didn't pay enough attention to it the first time, then you're gonna have troubles with it again. So make sure you put in the time and effort on every small step that you can because you're gonna see this material again. This material will be on the exam. So again, I want you to think about that ultimate goal, what lies in between where your playing is right now to where your playing is 
and at your ultimate goal and then break it down into some more manageable steps so that you can start making some progress, start hitting some small goals, and start feeling good about your guitar playing. I'm Tony G, and next time I see you, I hope I'm playing some jazz. I'll see you guys soon.